Dear God, please send a spirit of supplication upon our people like never before, that they may wake up and stop this event. Family, I have some very bad news for you. We are not praying enough to stop the tide of evil. Too many Christians are caught up in celebrating the holidays rather than defending their president and country with prayer. If we don't change, you can expect the very worst to happen soon. I've been feeling it for weeks, but now we are at the very end of this open window to change anything. Once that window shuts, it's the end. Everyone is focusing on celebrating when they should be weeping and fasting. The enemy knows well what you do between Halloween and New Year's Day, so he plans his most deadly assaults on the nation during that time when everyone has deserted their prayer closet. One of our most sensitive prayer warriors sent me this message. She said, I received this from Glenda Lomax, and Mother, when I saw it, fear came upon me and gripped me. For sometimes, I've been having what I thought was imagination of Trump being hurt in some way, like taken out of the way by some horrific thing, and I just can't shake it off. What do you think about this prophecy from Glinda? Well, normally I don't share prophecies outside of what the Lord Jesus gives us on our channel, but I think this one is worthy of being shared. But before I do that, I want you to hear Ezekiel's dream, because this event happened as well at the same time frame. Today, Ezekiel, upon waking from a rapture dream, confirmed Glinda's word with the Bible promises when he opened to the Holy Spirit, as well as it was confirming the dream he had just had. Ezekiel dreamt that there was some kind of guerrilla force in Cali, Colombia, South America, they were bombing the poor section of the town and using heavy equipment to collapse buildings on children who were playing in the street and on poor families. In the meantime, the wealthy were partying, going out on dinner dates and celebrating a holiday in grand style. Jesus appeared in the midst of the mangled bodies, looking over at the other part of town. Then he turned to us, a small group and began to lead us out of there. He said, Don't worry about these, they are with me. As we stepped over the mangled remains of children, men and women, the implication was, worry about those who were partying. We continued to walk and soon came to a bridge shrouded in mist. It was so very long we could not even tell what it was crossing over. I saw us all in our wedding gowns. Then the Lord said to me, It is time. After that, we just lifted off into the air and were raptured. Now here's Glinda's word from the Lord. She titled it Disobedience. I have told you in my holy word to pray for those in authority. Some of my children are being obedient to this, but many of you are not. An event is coming soon to remove one I have placed in authority to bless you. This event will be very terrible and is not my will. But my will is not carried out when the people refuse to pray. The Lord did not say who he was referring to, but I kept seeing the face of President Trump. There were also other faces, smaller, around him, but I did not recognize any of those. The word continues, If this event transpires, I will hold accountable those of you I have instructed to pray if you have not obeyed. My children, if you refuse to obey me, there is little I can do to bless you. Do not run out to play and pursue your own interests, ignoring what I have asked you to do, and then expect answers of all the things you desire of me. I desire obedient children. I bless obedience. I do not bless those who are disobedient. And that was the end of the prophecy. And the, one of the greatest blessings we have from the Lord is His protection, His divine protection. 
So at this point, I started communicating with him, and I said, Lord, I've been feeling it looming, trying to push it away, but it is so deep. I feel the darkness overtaking the world. I feel that we're losing ground as Christians, and I wonder how can you bear it any more? I know I am guilty of being distracted and not praying as I should for the country in the past week, as my focus has been on helping others. But please, Lord, receive the cross of pain that I feel over their situation and all that's entailed in it for the sake of the President. And Jesus began speaking to me. He said, what you are hearing, what you are seeing, all that you and Ezekiel and others are feeling is but an atom of the disgust with the state of this world. How I love the world, but how disgusted I am with the headway Satan is making while my people are out shopping for presents and making merry with no thought at all of what I want them to be doing. And now there is something terrible coming upon them for their disobedience. Children, the enemy has waited for this time when you would not be on the city wall guarding those within. You were very close, so very close, to losing everything. I have asked, I have begged, I have pleaded that you continue to pray for your president with great intention, responsibility for his welfare. But when I look upon my Christian people and what they are doing, I see that they are not on their knees. Their houses are bright with lights and decorations, but that brightness in the spiritual world is not light, but a dense darkness. It twinkles and shines on the outside, but within it is dark, the substance of which is death, materialism, and godlessness. The enemy knew you would be distracted, so he waited to move forward into his most devastating plans. You do not attack when they are guarding the walls. You attack when they are decorating the walls, making merry, getting drunk on the things of this world. Now he will call his forces forward in the most devastating attack on America that will ever go down in history. This does not have to happen. What I am asking of you in this moment is to repent, stop the shopping and spending, and get down on your knees. Fast and pray and come against this tide of darkness before it is too late. Yes, it is almost too late. But if you heed this message and spread it, put your hearts into prayer, it will be stopped. This is your last chance. If you do not act on this now, there is nothing more to do than wait for disaster to strike. But it is true. If you have not prayed, I will hold the disobedient accountable for this, because it was not my time, and I wanted you to hold back this tide of evil that is even now rumbling beneath your feet. And you know, that was strange. When he said that, I heard marching like thousands of big soldiers marching burly, hairy soldiers, not the kind of soldiers that we have in the military, like giants, like ten-foot giants. And the ground beneath me was thundering from the sound of this monstrous crowd in the bowels of the earth. Jesus continued, Yes, the minions of hell, the soldiers of darkness, hidden deep in the earth, are panting to be released on the nations. They are lusting for your blood and working up a storm of fury. Claire, dearest, all of these things are but whispers compared to what is real and soon to come. And today during dwelling prayer, I was dancing with the Lord in my wedding gown. and He was so tenderly aware of my struggles, and I was really trying to focus on His. And He had given me a red rose. I was holding it in my left hand, and apparently I pricked my finger with it because blood was running down my wrist. At the same time, He was in His wedding tux but wearing a bleeding crown of thorns. Yes, the thorns were exuding blood. Oh, Ezekiel and I have known that he is suffering. But in addition to that, Rainbow had a dream yesterday of the very same thing. She was dancing with the Lord in her wedding gown, but he was wearing a crown of thorns dripping with blood. Lord, I can only feel and sense from this 
that it is again the great suffering the world is causing you. Jesus continued, My beloved, you have no idea the pains I am suffering because people are ignoring me and my very real passion all over again for what is yet to come. It's devastating. I suffer very real pains with very few to comfort me, my bride. I long for all of you to recognize the agony I'm going through in this very moment because of the peril so many souls are in. Please comfort me. I love it when you wipe my brow with your gentle caresses. I love it when you touch my cheek and tell me how sorry you are for your sins and the sins of the world. I long for this attention more than any of you know. Evil increases exponentially. Rapidly, that is, like an explosion. And yes, the earth continues to quake more and more as Nibiru draws near. Oh, do wake up, my people, and pray. The heavenly bodies can go retrograde and be stalled. This I will gladly do as you pray and fast. Offer me all that you have. Give me deep sighs of regret for your shortcomings and the frozen hearts of so many of my people whose interests and caring don't go beyond their doorstep. Yes, terrorism is dreadful, but what is even more devastating is the cold hearts of my chosen ones. Oh, Lord, forgive me. My heart is so small, my mind so narrow, and my perseverance so short. Jesus replied, I will let you in on a little secret about yourself. What is that, Lord? You were beyond tired. You are utterly exhausted, and each day when you awake and cry out to me for help, I come and lift you up, and I do not set you down. I carry you the entire day. You are doing very little, Claire, but hosting me. What is being accomplished is my doing. You are merely my hands and my feet, my mouth. Your efforts are turtle steps in the desert. Mine are the waters of a cool oasis. Walk on, my little one. Soon I will sweep you up into my arms for eternity. But for now you must walk on and know that I draw very well with broken pencils. All of you heart dwellers are my masterpieces. You have come to me laying down all you have. I in turn have picked it up and made it into something beautiful to last through eternity. I know you are weary of those tiny turtle steps, but oh, how great is the fruit of your renewed efforts every morning. When you feel like going back to bed for a week, yet you stay up and call to me for strength to revive you. But now I want to bring this all together and tell you, you must pray or your president is a dead man. You must pray because what is planned is on a greater scale than you can even imagine. I will tell you this much. A horrendous event such as what is being planned is vulnerable at several points. It must pass through each one of these points to succeed. Your prayers are capable of stopping enough of these points that it will simply fail, like all the other attempts on his life. But because you don't believe that, because you prefer to celebrate and suffer and pray, because of that, Satan may succeed this time. It is totally up to you, heart dwellers. You have stopped these events many times, but this event is much bigger and requires much more prayer. Are you with me? Are you for me? Will you obey me? Your destiny is in your praying hands. I am counting on you to change your focus midstream and plow into prayer to stop this from happening. None of the criminals he is bringing to justice will be brought to justice if you do not pray. They will all get away and continue their detestable practices, stealing and consuming children and handing this nation over to her enemies. It is in your hands. Are you with me, my people?